Hi, I'm Tristan, and welcome to the CEA General Structure video. This video has a total runtime of about 20 minutes. First, we should define exactly what we mean by the structure. Now, we all have a pretty good intuitive notion of what the structure of the greenhouse is. It's the big metal and glass part that doesn't move. But that is unfortunately an insufficient definition. Now, if a greenhouse were just a big glass box as it's often portrayed, that definition would be fine but modern greenhouses contain many additional systems. We see that clearly in these pictures from Cornell's own greenhouses. Depending exactly how one defines the structure, almost any system in the greenhouse could fall under that broad umbrella. For instance, at what might seem like a more reasonable end of the spectrum, the steam heating system featured here occupies an entire wing of the greenhouse's basement and numerous pipes and radiators run throughout the structure in order to support it. Given how much of the building it occupies, it seems imminently reasonable to call it a part of the structure. The evaporative cooling system shown here is no different. Indeed, as you'll notice in this photo, the building itself has been modified in order to adjust the airflow over the cooling system's exterior components. Given how much the building has been changed to accommodate this system, it surely must be considered part of the structure. We can give more and more examples like this, noting heat sinks in the floors, pipes that travel through the ceiling, etc. But before long, we will have classified every major component of the greenhouse as part of the structure, and will have committed ourselves to an impossibly long and difficult analysis. So for the sake of our own sanity, as well as keeping this video under its time limit, we need a more precise definition of structure that helps us break the greenhouse design process into discrete chunks that can be managed independently. The definition we choose is that the structure of a greenhouse is composed of the components of that greenhouse that do not actively expend energy in order to function. Now at first glance, it may seem like we picked this definition arbitrarily. All of the examples we used of components we don't want to talk about during structural design expended energy, so it may seem like we picked a definition that we knew would exclude everything but simple components arbitrarily breaking greenhouse design into a number of steps we can handle independently. However, this is not the case. We selected this definition for a very specific reason, relating to how a greenhouse expends energy and what our goal is in greenhouse design. Let's go to the blackboard. Contrary to how they are popularly portrayed, greenhouses do not function to keep plants warm. Rather, they function to keep plants at a specific temperature that is considered desirable for plant growth eliminating both high and low extremes. We can represent that on a graph of temperature against time, where the x-axis represents the desired interior greenhouse temperature. By looking at how a CEA greenhouse would respond to this graph, we can see why we chose the definition of structure that we did. The simplest possible CEA greenhouse is just an enclosure that contains the plants as well as any other equipment required for the plants to survive. Since we're focusing on temperature here, we'll say that that's simply a heating and a cooling unit to deal with high and low extremes. As the day goes on and the temperature varies around the desired level, these climate control units will have to expend energy in order to keep the interior of the greenhouse at the desired temperature. The total amount of energy they must expend is proportional to the area under the temperature curve, that is, the integral of the curve's absolute value. A long hot period followed by a long cold period does not cancel to zero. Since any energy source, be it electricity, natural gas, or thousands of tiny hamsters on wheels, has a certain fixed cost per joule, this means that the total area under this curve is proportional to the greenhouse's total energy operating expenses. This reveals to us the reason why we defined structure the way we did. In showing this statement, that the greenhouse's total energy costs are proportional to the area under this curve. We didn't discuss what kind of heating or cooling system the greenhouse had, and that's because we don't need to discuss this. While different climate control systems may have different efficiency levels or different modes of operation or different power sources, the total amount of energy they must expend in order to keep the greenhouse warm will always be proportional to the area under this curve. In this respect, the difference between the structure and the rest of the greenhouse becomes evident. The rest of the greenhouse is concerned with how the greenhouse spends energy, the most efficient way to expend the energy that must be expended, the way to spend the least money per joule in order to expend that energy. 
the structure is concerned with minimizing the amount of energy the greenhouse has to spend in the first place. With the reason for our definition of structure now clear, we can see our goal in CEA structure design to minimize the total amount of energy the greenhouse must expend by minimizing the area under our temperature curve. In order to do this, we define a function f, which is equal to the difference between the desired greenhouse temperature and the greenhouse's natural median temperature based on the outside conditions. This definition allows us to eliminate cumbersome absolute values from our considerations, as well as dealing with any problems of the greenhouse's desired temperature changing over the course of the day. We can simply state that the total amount of energy the greenhouse must expend is proportional to the integral of F over the greenhouse's entire operating period. Now in order to go from this definition to being able to design an efficient greenhouse, we first have to be able to calculate the efficiency of a known greenhouse design. That is, once we have fully defined our greenhouse design, we want to be able to test its efficiency before we construct it.